Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on an introduction to the Wilcoxon Signed Rank Test. As always, if you find this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. The Wilcoxon Signed Rank Test is a non-parametric test, also known as a distribution-free test. And it is a non-parametric alternative to the dependent samples t-test otherwise known as the paired samples t-test. And it's not unusual to use the Wilcoxon sign rank test with data that was originally set to be analyzed with a paired samples t-test. However, the data did not meet the assumption of normality for the paired samples t-test. There is no assumption of normality in a Wilcoxon sign rank test. So the null hypothesis in Wilcoxon sign rank test is that the median difference between the pairs of observations equals zero. The median difference. The alternative hypothesis is that the median difference does not equal zero. It's important to note here that because the Wilcoxon sign rank test is a popular non-parametric alternative to the paired samples t-test, the paired samples t-test, the null hypothesis for that test, is that the mean difference between pairs of observations equals zero. So the paired samples t-test or dependent samples t-test looks at the mean difference and the Wilcoxon sign rank test looks at the median difference. Now taking a look at the elements of a Wilcoxon sign rank test. For this test you need two related groups, two dependent groups. This is a within subjects design. So I'll use an example. Let's say that we have 30 participants and these participants are suffering from depressive symptoms. And we administer a pretest using some sort of psychometric instrument designed to measure depression. And then we administer a treatment. For example, rational emotive behavior therapy, REBT. Then after the treatment is complete, we administer the same instrument, that same instrument designed to measure depression levels. And that is known as a post-test. So you have a pre-test, the treatment, and a post-test. So each participant in that case is being observed twice, once before the treatment and once after the treatment. This element of the Wilcoxon sign rank test is the same as what we see in a dependent samples t-test, two related groups. For the Wilcoxon sign rank test, you also have one dependent variable, just as is the case in a dependent samples t-test. And this dependent variable must be intrinsically continuous, meaning the construct that you're measuring. In theory, needs to be able to be measured at the continuous level of measurement, even if you cannot measure it at the continuous level of measurement in practice. It's intrinsically continuous. So while keeping that in mind, you have these three levels of measurement that you can use, the ordinal, interval, and ratio levels of measurement. Just be mindful when using the ordinal level of measurement that again, the construct needs to be intrinsically continuous. When taking a look at these levels of measurement, I'm going to start with the ratio level first and move down to interval and then ordinal. So the ratio level of measurement means that you have distances between the observations that are meaningful. For example, the Kelvin scale for measuring temperature. And you also have a true zero. And again, on the Kelvin scale, that's what you have. When you have a Kelvin scale observation of zero, that represents an absence of the construct that the Kelvin scale measures, which is heat. Interval has the same properties as ratio, except it does not have a true zero. So using that temperature example, the Fahrenheit scale would be an interval level measurement. The distance between the observations is meaningful, but the zero doesn't represent present an absence of the construct it's measuring. And then we have the ordinal level of measurement. We think of ordinal as ranked. 
so first place, second place, and third place in a race. You know the rank, first, second, third, but you don't know the distance between the first place finisher, the second place finisher, and the third place finisher. We sometimes think of Likert scales as ordinal as well, although sometimes they are treated as interval. The Wilcoxon sign rank test requires a minimum of five pairs of observations to be conducted. And as I mentioned with the example, it can be used for pretest, post-test designs. Now moving to the assumptions for the Wilcoxon sign rank test. The paired samples are random and independent. So each pair of observations are random and independent from all the other pairs. This assumption does not mean that each observation in a particular pair is independent. As a matter of fact, we would expect the observations to be dependent, as is the case with pretest, post-test design. With the Wilcoxon sign rank test, the distribution of the differences between the groups must be symmetrical. And we would most often test this using a box plot. So you would take the values of the pretest, that variable, and subtract the values in the post-test, so pretest minus post-test, that new variable that's created, that would be the differences between the pretest and post-test. That new variable, the differences, that's the distribution that's being referred to here. That distribution needs to be symmetrical. And then you'll notice here that there is no assumption of normality. As I mentioned before, we have in a paired samples t-test an assumption of normality. We do not have that assumption for a Wilcoxon sign rank test. I hope you found this introduction to the Wilcoxon sign rank test to be helpful. Thanks for watching.